Hello and welcome. It is round 12 of the AFL Armchair Advisors Season 2022 Previews. Fellas, it's great to be back in the studio. Great to be back in the studio for yet another week of bi-affected games. Only six games on the slate this week, but do not worry. We are coming to you with all of the predictions, all of the bets, all of the tips, all of the information that you punters and football aficionados need to know going into a big round 12. I am Rich, of course, of the Armchair Advisors. Joining me at my right hand is a man who will go into a pub, round up a posse of violence intending statistics, and then together we'll go and knife an unsuspecting bet in the back until it has given him as much cash as it can. It's, of course, Sensible Dan. How are you going, mate? That was one of your nicest introductions ever. That's I reckon good, yeah. that was actually quite a good one. Yeah, I'm feeling really good, mate. Obviously, it is a, uh, a cool morning. We're recording in the AM mm. this time around uh, due to some unforeseen issues, but uh, I'm feeling good. It's nice to get one out of the way early in the morning. Sets the day up right. Sets the day up right. Get your day off to a, a cracker with the boys. Mm. I'm all about that. All about that. And at my left hand is a man who is at the other end of the spectrum to Dan in every sense of the term possible. Best described as a six foot two Pokemon trainer whose <laughs> Tinder geographic location will do more kilometres than he ever will. It is our global field correspondent, Desmond Van Bus. I also appreciate that uh, that intro as well. But I'm, I'm stuck on a... I don't think your girlfriend I've, will I've, about the Tinder I've comment. Grabbed a, right. grabbed a quote, grabbed a quote from Dan, and he said he started the morning upright. Well, I'll tell you who started the morning upright. I, I will tell you who started the morning upright, and it was me. I am ready for the pod, baby. Got me, got me shirt on just to just to show you, yeah. just to show you. It's, without, morning, it's morning wood. Without well, getting it is morning wood. Without getting the wood out. What, what, what does that I'm say? I'm you how I've got the morning. It says COVID nineteen inches. <laughs> Jeez. Because, because man, thick. Man thick, R.I.P. My man. <laughs> so this went from a football related show to a uh, to a memorial show to uh, to wood. Yeah, fantastic. Perfect. Do you know what? And you can't. It's, it's never. It's, a it's never a bad. Never a bad time to a, a peni related show because peni is the plural, and he has the size of about four men. So R.I.P. And it's never a bad time to honour the great man. Never. You know, it's funny, he, he rocks this out. I was genuinely thinking about doing an opener to the show. I was about to come out and say, all right, boys, it's round 12. In honour of round 12, guests today will be including uh, David Bowie, Drew Barrymore. Uh, what do they all have in common? Famous buyers, of course. But I thought, no, that will be that will be inappropriate. <laughs> that will be inappropriate and I won't do it. I won't say it on the show and I won't do it. No. But Desmond's just, he's it's, it's just, it's one up to me and what a one it is. It is. What a one. Let's crack onto it. Six big games this week, six massive games, and uh, there's going to be a bit of aggro in this show, I reckon. There's just, there's been a bit happening in the world, so get keen for Dummy of the Week. But let us proceed with Thursday night at the MCG. The old foes. This has turned into a little mini rivalry of the it last has. couple of years, and yeah. I'm a big fan of it. It's the Port Adelaide Power squaring up to the Richmond Tigers at the G. Sensible Dan, you're looking warm in your freeze MND beanie. Absolutely. I rate it. What do you got uh, for me absolutely. on this one? And that is, uh, the preview for that is coming up later, so mm -hmm. get ready for that. Uh, it's a tough one to preview, actually, because both teams coming off a bye, I think they'd be nice and well-rested. Mm. Uh, both came in to the buyer of reasonably good form. Richmond came in with four wins in their last five, power mm. three in their last five. So um, it's it's going to be a good game. I'm actually really looking forward to it. I, 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 even setting aside they're coming into into the game in good form, like you said, a little bit of a rivalry. These two teams do not like each other. No, I don't know. Uh, and it all stemmed back from that uh, elimination final, I think it was, a couple of years back. 2018? Right. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere in that... 19, somewhere in that region. And ever since then, it's just been uh, just been back and forth. Mm. And, and they always provide their goods. Um, Port, fourth best defence in the league by points, would you believe? That's not bad. Interesting. That's not bad considering they're in the bottom half of the table. Go um, a -lear. A -lear, lear baby. Absolutely. They need more from the midfield. That's a, absolutely a massive point. Butters, Rosie, Boat, Wines, not quite hitting the levels that you'd like them to see. So hopefully they do in this one. Um, and the Tigers, I reckon if they play at their absolute best, they can make finals from here. I I am inclined to agree with you on that. That's not a wild call. If you no. just said that a month ago, I'd have been like, mm. hold, I don't, I don't hold think on. it's that bad either. They're no, in the yeah. eight, aren't they? No. No. They will be. They're, they're very, very close. Four points away, in fact. So uh, Look, I, I think that they, at, at their best, they can absolutely play finals this year. And then, obviously, the old saying, destiny is in their hands from there. Pretty much. No, I like that. Short and sweet from yourself. The power beat the Bombers last round. Well, round 10, when, uh, when we didn't have the buys on the go. Richmond... Got dudded by the umps. Uh, 
controversial. Don't care what you think. Don't care what you think. Absolutely the wrong call. Richmond got dudded by the umps. Could have, who knows? Who knows what could have happened in that game? Having said that, the power coming off of a win, they beat the Bombers on one stat, and that's the scoreboard. The Bombers, if you have a look at the stats from that game, they outworked, they outran, they outtackled, they did all of the right things except kick goals. And I have a strong suspicion that that could be the power this week. I would... I would argue that point only because it was uh, it was pouring with with wet in the in the second. But half I still of the game. Essendon, and I know that Essendon have a have something up there, a bit of bit of bark up the ass at the moment. But I'm gonna start using they're that. Still the I don't know that before, and yeah. I should. Yeah. Yeah. Still yeah. bombers, the old splinter bum. Um, no, Boyd, but, Boyd but Woodcock doesn't play anymore. It's no. still <laughs> it's still the bombers. You can't let the bombers outwork you no. on your home deck. Like I know you won. I'm jumping in. This rivalry here, it's gonna this is gonna break the narrative a little bit because whenever the games matter, mm. whenever it's finals. Richmond will always win. Whenever it doesn't matter throughout the season, Port have been winning ever since this 2019. That's yeah, an look, interesting call. Though. I had I had a look back, and it's actually it's genuinely true. And and you look Port. Have you done some research this week? I think yeah. I think this is going to break the. I looked at it. I was like, this is I like this game, but I think this is going to break the cycle because Port have been winning in the in the season in the in the Toyota. Is it still Toyota? Twenty twenty two. Yeah, sure. Apple. Go with that. Call it whatever you want. Yeah. It's called Armchair Advisors twenty twenty two. Imagine. <laughs> <football season. laughs> It's that, but that they're going to break the cycle because Richmond are going to get up here. I'm, I'm Port aren't, Port aren't traveling and winning. I, I'm, yeah. Look, they could do. They've uh, Port have not shown themselves to be afraid of playing on the G. But I'm just going to co- cobble together Frankenstein mode the things that you blokes have been saying just to summarise because I do strongly agree. Port's missing one to two blue chip midfielders and they just don't have that. Yep. Again, Richmond know exactly what to do and when to do it when when the whips start cracking and this is now starting to get into sort of you know season defining territory. This game. When that pressure's coming hot, I reckon Richmond have got a few more points in the bank, know how to deal with it. Having a look at the lineups, you've got a young Sam Mays, mm-hmm. right, who's going to be rucking in the centre. That's where it starts from, centre bounce. Sam Mays would be an interesting choice in the ruck. Sam Sa- Hayes, Sa- more like. Did I say I Mays? Thought. Yeah, 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 but that's okay. Apologies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sam Mays, roughly the same size as me, so I would have yeah. thought Nank had the, uh, the upper hand on Yeah, him. but you're 6'8 and 250 pounds. True. So what are you talking about? True. Uh, Sam Hayes in the middle for the power. Bones all. Now, do, doing his best, doing his best under the circumstances. Coming up against Soldo, who's back and fresh as a daisy, mm-hmm. and Nan Curvis, who's in probably the best month of his life career wise. Spanky yep. Nanky. Now, I think that's, I genuinely think that's where your first and most key advantage is going to be. And if Richmond can control it from that point, which I expect they will, they're going to win. Tigers 1 to 39 for mine. Boys. Unlike you to suck off, Ruckman. <laughs> I agree with you though. Tigers one to thirty nine, absolutely. <laughs> Tigers one to thirty nine, consensual consensus. Consensual consensus. Also, Bolter and Lambert back for the um, well, just, for, the, for the Tiggies. That just makes me just even more confident. In. Premiership experience. Love but it. Bolter's sorely missed in that team. Yeah. Massively, big time. Bolter so- and Baker off of half bank. Yeah, I mean, Baker. I know you can play Bolter anyway. The old ba- arc, Baker's mate. been a jet. The old arc. <laughs> What do you got for me, bets-wise? Uh, I've got Jason Castagna for a goal, dollar fifty-three. Didn't do it last week, but I'd done it in the yep. four previous, so I'm backing him into to return to goal-scoring form. Mm. Robbie Gray for a goal, dollar thirty-five. He's always around the mark, and that's pretty good value, I reckon. Contract for, years, for Robbie. Well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Dion Prestia for twenty-five plus. Now, obviously, there's a, a you know a caveat to that one. That's if he stays on the ground for the full four quarters. The meatball. And that mm-hmm. is that is the hardest thing in the world for him to achieve. I strongly agree. Hungry. But when he can, and when, when he, he does. When he can, he racks up. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Uh, no, I strongly agree on that. I like that from you. Uh, what have I got here? A couple of legs in terms of bets. Now, take these individually, smack them into a multi, whatever you like. I, I support your life choices is what I'm saying. But I'm having a look at Dustin Martin for an anytime goal. Loves the big stage. Mm-hmm. Loves the big occasions. Uh, Sam Powell Pepper, anytime goal. Had one goal four the other week. He all of a he, sudden he's genuinely in career best form. Seriously, and he only needs yeah. a sniff. He only needs a sniff. We kick he, three when we watched him against the dogs. Like he's he is slotting pies. And he was out for blood against Essendon. I don't know if you watched that game, but mm-hmm. that wet weather. As soon as the, the the drizzle started coming down, he thought that's it. I'm claiming bodies. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm I'm here for it. I genuinely am. Uh, so Dustin Martin and Sam Power Pepper anytime goals. And then I also don't mind Willem Drew for 15, just quietly chugging along as, as that second string in the power midfield. Mm-hmm. Zach Butters, Trent Koch, and Liam Baker all to have 20 disposals apiece. Lovely. Yes. All right. We've talked about the Bombers. Shit can them a little bit. It's a big week for the Bombers, Desi. A big old week for the Bombers. Friday night at the G. I hope I said Thursday night for that first game. <laughs> Man. Yeah. First one's Thursday night if you... Uh, if, if, if you were if, unsure yeah, on that one. Know. And if you don't know, now you know, as a great man once said. Friday night at the G, it's the Essendon Bombers squaring off against the old foes, the Carlton Blues. I think uh, these Bombers games are going to be careful, especially with who you bet head-to-head at the moment, because oh. Bombers are going to get a win eventually. They're going to... They're not... Like, they're working hard. 
in relation to their ability, which isn't <laughs> yeah, for always one ga- for one game. Yeah, yeah. They, they worked hard against the Tigers for two and a half quarters. Like they they've been they've been putting in better performances, and and that's going to get them a win against a team um, that, that sleeps on them. But Carlton are going to be sitting on that Not Collingwood loss. No. Carlton Not are going to be sitting on that Collingwood loss. What is Carlton's midfield? Even if you get their B grade midfield. What what are Essendon going to do? They are, Carlton are going to run wild. Carlton are going to run wild. Is Harry, how how long is Harry McKay out for? Is he uh, back or what? No, he'll be out for a bit. Yeah, a couple of months. Oh, like he's back in, tra- he's back in training. I don't, I don't think he'll yeah. be that far. He will not certainly not playing this week. Well, lucky, yeah, I, lucky, I, I, lucky for the Bombers because it. That, but that's they won't made need, surely another two. They won't need him. Well, well I was going to say no, nah, but I mean that was, that's got made me go from one to thirty nine to forty, but from to forty plus mm-hmm. if McKay was in. But I'm going one to thirty nine. How's the how's the rasp on him as well? Just the lean on the yeah. desk. Oh, no, nah, boys. I've got a bit of... Um, yeah, if McKay was in. Well, well, for the I mean, that, that, <laughs> that, that, that is what drinking every night for the last three weeks will do to you. A <laughs> yeah. little, little bit of laryngitis. Yeah. left from, him on the uh, campus. From on karaoke. The campus. From karaoke. Come in a... Uh, while, 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 while pissed. Yeah. <laughs> come in a... Uh, what karaoke I song you think? We'll of? always <laughs> love you. You can hear it from here. Oh, rotten old dog. Unbelievable. <laughs> Don't yeah. have it. Oh, shit. It's, the, it's Essendon's 150th uh, celebrations. Now, you might have noticed. You would have noticed, obviously. Awesome. I, think it was, I think it was you that told me. They've got the uh, they've got the, the logo, the new logo on the um, on the, on the the breast, mm-hmm. which I actually prefer yeah. to their regular one. Yeah. So it's, Bring back the old one, this one. No, so, I rate this so, one. So, so, like so, so wait until next week for return to regularly scheduled shit. Well, I suspect it's going to be regularly scheduled shit this week, anyways. Mm. Like just because it's the one fiftieth, they've arbitrarily chosen it's Carlton. Yeah. All the VFL fans yeah. are going to yeah. love it. I mean, so what? What is Essendon? What is this team? Carlton's not going to care if it's your hundred and fiftieth or your your Nan's eighteenth or no. whatever. It doesn't matter. They're no. just going to rock up and smash skulls. They're not going to care. If you've got an eighteen year old Nan, there is some serious <laughs> issues in your bloodline, mate. But well, some serious <laughs> issues. Talk to the residents of Warrnambool. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you that. <laughs> Sorry, Warrnambool, I just picked on you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just unbelievable. One. Uh, look, uh, uh, I, I, I always hate to say it. You are absolutely bang on the money here, though. Blues are clear winners, barring some sort of miracle. As you rightly said, don't care what you're celebrating. You are not winning this game. In good news for the Bombers, though, Jake Stringer is back. Ooh. Likely he'll play this week, which is actually a big in for them. Like They do miss him. He's entertaining to watch. Time. Yes, I agree. Yeah. And he actually is one of the few players in the league who can turn a game off his own boot. And they, look- they, they, they really do froth on him. Uh, just having those few plays a game where he jags a, a snap from outside fifty or, or whatever. Um, so he, yeah, they they they'll be much better for having him back in the team. But you're not beating mm. Carlton, no. no, not this week. Although having said that, a, a, just a tremor crossed my mind when I had a look at the um, the team sheets and and re remembered that uh, no McKay or McKay, everyone pronounce it McKay, no Weedering, two big holes structurally speaking. Humongous. Two big holes. Now it's so therefore all the work's got to get done by the midfield. But is Carlton's midfield probably the, the deepest batting in the league? I would have thought. Do they care more about performance as opposed to racking stats as opposed to their Essendon? You know, they um, do now. Compadres. The, the thing, the, the thing is, you, you look at the two midfields, right? Essendon's midfield racks up stats, mm. but they're all completely pointless. Mm. Carlton's midfield all rack up stats, and all of them are completely. Uh, direct to the forward line that there, there, there's always a structure in play it doesn't matter if they have six handballs around a contest because it's going forward anyway strongly agree. like like they're, they're all with purpose um that's the big difference between the two midfields like darcy parish will probably have 42 disposals in this game because that's what darcy parish does mm-hmm. 20, credit to him hard works hard work. oh look you you got to get your hands on the peel that's the hardest thing to do in, in football 42 disposals is great if 29 of them are backwards handballs well yeah very very really going you to. know that, that, is it really helping the team? So, yeah. Speaking of not helping the team, uh, a little ghost from the past has read its old balding head this week. Uh, Kev Sheedy's got out in the news <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and said, no, nah, this is rubbish. I'm, I'm 75 now. Desmond, is, I think was what the quote said in the Herald Sun. I love Kevin Sheedy. <laughs> well, I do as well. Like he's, you know, you, Typically, you, yes. You grow up seeing the bloke on the TV and you're like, oh, you know, old football Don. Do you know what I mean? Max what, respect. What did he say though? What did he say? Well, no, he's coming out and saying that the AFL needs to apologise. Everyone's demanding everyone apologise oh, yeah. this week. What? The AFL Why needs to come out. Even, I think. Well, he needs to come out and uh, and apologise to... The, the, yeah, he said the AFL needs to come out and apologise to Essendon for all of the um, the shit that they've dragged him through in the last 10 years. and 10 years and not one positive test. You know, it's disgraceful. You know, how long is this going to remain the case? AFL, what, 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 look, shut what, up, did you say, look, look, nah, did you look. say positive tests? Because I know there was a couple of negative tests, I believe, wasn't there, from the Bombers a couple of years ago? That That's what he's... 
That's what he's talking about. Tests. Yes. That's well, yeah, like the injections. Have... Everyone know, like do you, everyone, yeah. everyone, everyone has positive tests. Shady, you idiot. <laughs> Besides Essendon, no. What, what, what are you talking mean? about? What are you talking about? Are one you, positive. No. All right, let's let's wind this in. Are let's you, wind this in right I now. I get the feeling you're talking about AIDS. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh god. Yeah. Right. Okay. The drugs. The, he's talking about the drug <laughs> saga. Right, <thank> <laughs> uh, apologies if it wasn't yeah. clear at home. I knew in my own head. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. The drug saga, and he said there was not one official. He said there was not one official positive test that had been brought forward by the AFL to say, hey, look, X and Y tested positive for A, B and C at the Essendon Bombers. He's saying because that never happened, the AFL was owes all, the all dollars. Why would he bring up dirty laundry like that? What an idiot. Well, I get asked about it every day and it boils my blood. And maybe you do, Kev. See, look, we're, maybe, we're, and maybe it does, Kev, but like, fuck it. We, they just we, don't uh, need this. You know, me and you, obviously you being GWS, we as, we as Crows fans, we still get sick of people talking about the, the training camp saga. Yeah. yeah. That was far more recent than the drug saga, and Essendon like they still cannot get past the drug saga. Like I They're said, going I, to, I, though, I, people I, always remember. That I'm it's always, always going to be a joke. I'm always a big fan of people shit canning the AFL because, yes. like, I hate the AFL. Also, agree. like in in terms of the the the, the governing body of it, yeah. I, I hate them. They, they're completely ruining yeah, the game week in week out. So whenever anyone takes the opportunity to throw shit, pot at shot them. Great, yeah. good, good. Not about the drug saga. Get some new content. There's yeah. so many other things we no, can pick on No, but they actually did for. well with that. They actually did. They actually, I feel like they got off clean. I feel like Essendon got off quite well. With what, the, you got a year? This In is, any other sport, you get, what, two, four, this, banned? Like, this could one, be, this one could year's be, lucky. Yeah but, yeah, but in any other sport, you would have to test positive for something in order to cop that ban. It, oh, look, I see where he's coming from, but bro, it's the 150th supposed celebration. And now you're putting shit on him. Do you know what? Exactly. We're Put, sp- putting the mockers on him. Too, I'm going to cut you off. Please we do. Spent, we spent too long on this. Yeah. Carlton, 40. Plus, thank, thank you. you. Do your bets. And Kevin Shady, time. shut up. <laughs> uh, uh, what have we got? Oh, no, 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 you go first. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, All you right. go first. We're, we're probably oh. going to have a little... I got a bit, I've got a bit lusty on this one. That's fine. Right? Blood started flowing to well, the vast uh, deference uh, well, and I started just uh, clicking uh, options. Again, when it's, you know, 70 to 15 and a half time, desert. you've got to have some bets to, to, <laughs> yeah. to ride home. Keep you spurred up on. Uh, look, big uh, big Darcy Parish for 30 plus, lock that in. That's still a dollar thirty. Like, it's, you know, there's still reasonable odds. It's a nice multi-fluffer. He'll have 30. And he's always a chance of getting because no one's ever tagging him. No no one's ever bothering to tag Darcy Parrish. So well, as you said, look, that the- bloke's handballing backwards. <laughs> Stop him! Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Uh, Darcy Parrish, 30 plus. Thank you. Uh, Doherty and Chera for 25 disposals apiece. Uh, apologies for omitting Sam Walsh because he'll have 30 as well, he I will. suspect. Yep. $1.39, I've got that righty. Ain't that beautiful? Ain't that beautiful? Uh, Zach Fisher for 15. And I, he'll have 17 and two points. I've there got that go. right here as well. <laughs> oh, hello, boys. Uh, uh, did I say Andy, Andy McGrath for 20 disposals? You didn't, but you have now. Yeah, I'm locking in. You know, he's uh, injured. He's a test to play this week. He'll play. That's a bit of a worry for He'll me. play. Anyway. He'll play. Go on. Uh, yeah, go on. I'm confident. Man. Yeah, I'm confident. Like, uh, you, you always say, take these with the, a pinch a, of salt. A, a grain of salt. That's Absolutely. Uh, Harrison Jones, Essendon through and through. Do you know how he got into the AFL, Harrison Jones? Interesting story. Co- being, call- being good at footy. Well, no, but he, call- he called up Adrian. Well, I say Adrian specifically. He called up the Essendon recruiting department and said, I want to play with you. <laughs> <laughs> and they dead set selected him. <laughs> yeah, and, we, and we wonder why Essendon is where they are. <laughs> He you should, call, you should give him a call this week. Yeah. Right. Go on then. Eagles, come at me. <laughs> I'll play. Oh, God. I'll just throw hands. Harry Jones, <laughs> anytime goal. Charlie Kerno for two, thanks. And Patrick Cripps, anytime goal as well. He's played 11 games and he's averaging 1.5 goals a game at the minute. Cripper, so there's there's nine legs for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine legs for you. If you, were just, if you did go a multi, it's paying 24 bucks. Not bad. Cripper's actually kicked more goals already than he ever has in any other season. Good, isn't it's it? It's not bad. Yeah, he's good, good. good, I, good I, just, I just had to... <laughs> wait, true. They've got to stop that. I uh, also had Lockie O'Brien for 15-plus disposals. Good. He's doing that every week at the moment. Out on, a, out on a, a wing. And uh, Corey Durden for a goal, $1.42. Ooh, dirty. I think we've just about nailed every single leg that there is to nail in this game so far. Because I also had Peter Wright for 2-plus. You, the, meant, you mentioned yeah. weedering out. Yes. Perfect game for Peter Wright to chip in two, two pointless up. goals. And standing on Caleb Marchbank. And congrats to Marchbank for getting Absolutely. back in. We love that. Over a thousand days out of the league, Marchbank, and he's playing this weekend. Rough it's going. Bad, it. It's rough going in it. Yeah, poor bloke. Anyways, no. Desi, scramble time. Come on, let's get it done early. All right. Just, to, early. just to put a good taste in everyone's mouth, I don't even hate to have Paddy Cripps in the ruck for Carlton because the ruckman just tap it That's because you him. don't play fantasy. Trust me. Uh, if you played fantasy, you would hate him. We Wait. are very angry. In Giants, <laughs> Proust literally just tapped, it, just tapped it straight to Cripps or Walsh every single time in that Giants game. But that's we'll talk about that another day. Who would win in a fight? Who would win? It's actually not a silly scramble today. So if you guys want to comment along, like, subscribe, I want to see some answers. Des wants to see some answers or the scramble just, may just go quickly, away. Where, where did you get the inspiration from this? It wouldn't happen to be two Melbourne Demons players, would it? 
<laughs> yeah, good. Who would win in a fight? A so, and you guys can both answer this. We've already discussed this first one, but it's oh, the shit. topic you think of when you think of the animal kingdom. Sure. A silverback gorilla or a grizzly bear? Who would win? Uh, this is a podcast of itself. Yeah, it is. I, I, we discussed this earlier. Yeah. Silverback. We think it's silverback. We all have S- great silverback. silverback. A little warm up. Smarter, stronger, and can get far more angry. All right. A Doberman and an adolescent wolf. So not like a full grown. Well, how big's the Doberman? Timber wolf. A fully grown Doberman. A full grown timber wolf. <laughs> not a fully grown timber wolf, mate. Well, timber wolves are uh, quite small comparatively. So oh, I'm going the Doberman. Timber wolf and a Doberman. <laughs> I'm going the Doberman, yeah. If it's a full grown timber wolf, you'd say the wolf. But. Yeah. They're not massive. Yeah, they're not Doberman, massive. Dobermans are freaks. Do- I mean, Dobermans are not big either, though. Uh, no, but they're fucking. They're tough. Can you just not swear, please? What's the terrain? What's the terrain? <laughs> what what terrain are we talking? Who's home ground? Is it like mountainous region or nah, a it's, house? It's in a it's in a it's in a train station. <laughs> <laughs> a train station. Doberman, Doberman, lock it in. Uh, yeah, I'll go <laughs> Doberman. <laughs> I was not expecting that at all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a killer whale versus three great white sharks. Great um, whites have severely, like, in regards to size, outmatched killer whales of bloody big animals, I'm and they st- eat sharks. Yeah, I'm going with But are the three sharks smart enough to get the whale? No, if you said 10 sharks, then yeah, probably. Yeah, 10, 10 sharks will win. All right. That's actually tough, though. Three, I mean, attacking from three different points at once. It doesn't yeah, have they're hands not work to fight to... off. It's swimming like this. Yeah, but they don't have hands to fight either. So, like, uh, they're it not going to work one. together. They're not going to coordinate their attacks. They might. But they won't. This is a completely hypothetical situation. They're you, not pack they animals. They need two logically. Well, they're, they're not pack animals. Right. We'll they're, make they're, a choice because I've got a triple threat look, for kick, you. Kill a whale. Go kill a whale. All right, triple threat. You've got a koala. You're going to hate me for this. R.I.P. the koala. <laughs> the <laughs> koala's literally just there to get pinned. So yeah. why say it? Go on. Co- to it's get funny. pinned. A, a koala. Um, bar a koala. Yeah, yeah. It's getting, the koala's getting <laughs> just buried. To give everyone, no more. Just to give everyone chlamydia. A koala, a grizzly bear, and a polar bear. Triple threat. Well, in that the case, bear. actually, long term, the koala wins. If it gives the if it, if it gives the, the grizzly and the, the polar bear chlamydia... Long term, it's, <laughs> sure. over, it's over for them. <laughs> Not if the koala is dead sure. in the first five seconds. So it's the equivalent of a venonat giving you toxic early yeah. on in the early on in the Pokemon yeah. fight, and then yeah. you just succumbing to poison later on. Yeah, <laughs> sure, brilliant. What do you think? They're both going to eat the, the tainted meat. <laughs> Are they not? Yes. I know a few girls that would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so hold on. So koala, polar, and grizzly. Yeah, you've already used the grizzly. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but it's again, bear, where's, the, where's the terrain? Bear, bear, bear. In Arctic the woods. woods. Oh, okay. Grizzly. Grizzly. Yeah, true. It's polar bear carcass, eh? Yeah. Far out. Well, if the polar bear does, by some miracle, happen to beat the grizzly, mm. it'll cark it on the way back to the ice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lo- long way away. So many KGs lost. <laughs> I, think everyone, I think everyone's dying in this one. <laughs> All right, two more left. That's a sad one. one. We've got some tag teams now. We've got some tag teams going on. A rabbit and a bull versus two giraffes. <laughs> I got the ball, the, the the ball and the rabbit. Yeah. The ball's going to do all the damage, man. Two giraffes, then the, 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 the giraffes are not going to be able to take down a ball. I just don't see, like with what offense. Yeah, exactly. Will Sw- swinging, swinging the head round. <laughs> it's not going to happen. No, nah, no. Nah, all right, the, the and bet, final, the, final one. All right, one Rottweiler versus the armchair advisors. Well, that just makes us seem like animal abusers. Well, again, you <laughs> and I can sit, we, you and I can let sit that back. Rottweiler bite your leg. You you and I can sit back because I'll champ pork over yeah. here. He's going to absolutely get all the work done yeah. for us. We'll just have a beer. Yeah, I'll take one des. Yeah, I'll take one des. Thank you. Not one des. You ask. I'm not beating a Rottweiler. Of course you are. We're <laughs> well, talking about. No, oh, no, 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 And you uh, guys pick up the scraps and start the, throwing elbows. The, at the, the Rottweiler. thing is, right? The Rottweiler gets you. Technically, me and Rich win because you're gone. Yeah, exactly. so, 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 so this is Alien versus Predator. Whoever <laughs> yeah, wins, we win. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's amazing. Uh, I've got one for you. I'm going to throw it back at you. In yeah. honor of uh, two scrapping demons, who's winning in a fight between? Uh, and I'll go your tag team, uh, Stephen May and um, Harrison Petty, or uh, Jake Milksham and uh, Jake Bowie. Oh, Jake Bowie throws a spanner. I think. I think. I think May beats May. May is concussed. So if he's is he still concussed in this fight? Before that, it's been like a week since he got knocked out. You said to me off like imagine if Stephen May is not concussed. You said to me off air that Stephen May would beat Jake Milksham in a one on one. One hundred percent. Jake Milksham is an accomplished amateur boxer. Nah, undefeated. Wrestling. Wrestling. You know, well, he would just take him down. Well, it's no holds barred. Just go. He would just it. take him down. It's all good. The box. So who's winning? May is a big boy. May. 
Mate. You take May and Petty because they're massive. Mate. Ja- Jake Bowie is, yeah. you know. I like Jake Bowie, though. He's only ever had one no, um, in his life. Yeah, but he, no, two now. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, true. He's, he, Jake Bowie's there to get pinned. Mate. <laughs> good good from you. Good there from you, Des. I actually enjoyed that. I didn't mind that for, for a change. It's nice to actually say that for once. Uh, something else I'm going to enjoy is the Saturday afternoon bout at Optus Stadium between the uh, the the undisputed, undefeated, with the asterisk next to it, Fremantle Dockers, who are squaring up against the Hawthorne Hawks. Gents, Frio, wow, Fr- Frio, wow. Actually, do you have a do you have a haiku this week? I don't have you a haiku. You slob. I, I was don't. I was thinking. I was, come up with one now. Come up. You come. You got. Whilst I you, talked you, to Dan about yeah. football, you come up with a haiku. You're, you're taking this game off. All exactly right. right. <laughs> All right, mate. Here you go. Good, yeah, good, good to see you. Good yeah. to see you. Everything went right for them. Like, oh, it, the, 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 just don't talk. Just do it. Right. Hard work mm. creates opportunity and yep. luck. Yep. Right. Yep. That is exactly what we saw with Frio. Yep. They worked their asses off. Every opportunity that then eventuated, they took. Yep. More often than not, it came off for them. The, those 50 50s that could have gone either way, they had the lion's share of those. Again, hard work puts that on the mm-hmm. table for you. And look at the end result. You yep. beat one and two in consecutive weeks. They are rolling at the minute, Frio. Yep. Yep. I mean, the dip will come at some stage. The dip will come. And Hawthorne's all of a sudden sort of bouncing around as one of those danger teams that if you're not quite up on your game, then they'll probably they'll just bob up and, yep. and just rabbit punch you out of nowhere. Yep. Do I think it's this week? I do, I do not think no. it is this week. Because no. if you beat one and two, then the Hawks, who played one of the worst halves of football in that first half of that game against the Pies last week that I've seen this season. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's going to be enough for Freo to, 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 to use Dez's terms. Pin you early yeah. and... Um, stuff some bark this in your ass. This is a squash stuff, match. Stuff some bark in your <laughs> ass. Correct answer. Squash match right here. We don't even need to go into it too much. Freo looking unreal. Mm-hmm. The haiku is ready. You just, just quickly, before you go on with that, you did say there's an asterisk, and mm-hmm. there is. Mm-hmm. Where, where the footy? Correct. Frio has shown their hand. Well, and they're not undefeated this year. So. No, Frio has shown. That's what. That's the asterisk, though. They're they're undefeated in dry weather footy. Is it wet? Un- Before I do the haiku, you read out the legs, and I'll do the. I don't know what the weather's going to be like, but the second half of the uh, the Hawthorne Collingwood game. Mm. Did you see the weather? It got slippery. It was coming down sideways, mm. and that's when Hawthorne played their best footy. So, if if it is wet over in Perth, I'm, doing, I'm looking at right. I'll still now. be tipping Fremantle because I think they've. <laughs> I, I think I, I think after two wet games, they'll have the idea. That their game plan got to change in the well, weather. Well, it's going to be very, very wet. Thunderstorms all day, all weekend. Ooh, interesting. I did just say I was going to tip Fremantle, so I've got to stick with it now. But, you, no, you're in but the that's that, but that's danger. That's danger for Freo. Massively. They, they're going to if they if they know it's going to be wet, you've got to go in with a different game plan. Their their game plan is awesome, fantastic, but it doesn't work in in wet weather. It's been proven. They got to try something different um, if they're going to beat Hawthorne in the, the wet. The mental, the mental fortitude that you've now got after beating one and two. Mm-hmm. A, oh. going to the G and getting it done, yep. and then B, coming home and getting it done. Mm-hmm. I just... That alone is worth an extra player or two on the field. Yep. Like, I can't see... And speaking, Frio... and speaking of that, it's probably a good chance that Nat Fife will get up and play this week. Well, yeah, wowzers. Play, play a game this week, have a week off, then come back after the bye. In That's the perfect. Perfect. Put him as the Medi sub. Yep. Put him as the Medi sub. Yeah. I, I, look, they're already a, one of the top three teams in the league. Mm-hmm. That just that almost pushes them to to, to number one. Nearest damn it. Nearest damn it. So I'm saying oh, Dockers, mm-hmm. Dockers that look and these not to slag off the Hawks. No, no. They're doing a lot better than I thought they would, Absolutely. but they're clearly two teams at the end of the rebuild sort of mm-hmm. spectrum. Mm-hmm. Hawthorne is like twenty five percent of the way in. Mm-hmm. Frio's about ninety five percent of the way done. Well, I mean, with their rebuild and Hawthorne in and of itself is two teams. You, you saw yeah. two teams on the weekend. Yeah. Second half, fantastic. First half, as you rightly said. Absolute pass. It was so, generally, and, and that happens week in, week out. That's their biggest flaw. There's no consistency. Young teams just, doing just young no, team things. No consistency. So anyway, look, Freo one to thirty nine because it's wet. I'm not going to say forty plus. No, blessed. Now, now then, now then. I, th- I think you guys in read, read, read read your bets, <clears throat> and because in, in the Desmond Van Bus School of Haiku, we we don't gamble. We just poet. <laughs> we just yeah, and, poet. and you've got no students that go there. <laughs> Don't use the word school in a sentence if you're going to follow it up with that Unbelievable. garbage goal. Uh, I've got Sam Switkowski for a goal on return. I feel If he plays this week, obviously, if he gets himself back into the team. Dollar thirty nine. done it in his last five. Lovely. Dylan Moore for a goal. Took a week off. He did. Now he's back for the last two with goals again. Dollar fifty four. That's very good value for mine. Uh, Jordan Clark for 20 plus. Mm. Did it again on the weekend. That's six games in a row now. It's $1.53. 
pick up. That's good value. That's oh. ripping value. <laughs> and uh, ang- uh, I almost said Angus. I always get him confused, even though they're totally different. Andrew Brayshaw for 30-plus disposals, $1.65. If it is wet, the ball will be living around the stoppages, and that's where he does his best work. That's bloody excellent from you, Dan. Big fan of all of that. Big fan of all of that. Uh, what did else did I have? Uh, Dylan Moore actually did feature for me as well in the disposal category. 15-plus for young, uh, young Dylan. Uh, James Sicily and Hayden Young to both have 20 disposals. Hayden Young especially is just, I don't know, he had that sort of that little week off there where he was injured or whatever it was a couple of weeks yep. back. He's come back firing, love it. So Sicily, enough said, Don, Jet. Sicily and Hayden Young for 20 disposals apiece. He's he still got to 20 on the weekend. Oh, no, sorry, he had 19 on the weekend. But, you know, he's been moved out of the, um, the kick-ins. Yeah, I saw that. And he took one on the weekend. And he still racked up 19. Yes. That's enough for me. Yes. And I, I didn't mind the 19 because that's, that's enough bad. to just knock the odds up just a tiny fraction more. Uh, Will Brody and Caleb Sarong, 25 disposals apiece. <laughs> Both of those are already, like all of a sudden, and it's on their form, you can't knock them out of the midfield. But someone's got to go. Mm-hmm. History tells someone's got to go. So they're playing for their posies. Brody and Sarong, 25 apiece. Chad Wingard kicked a goal in every single game for the Hawks this season. And I don't see the Hawks scoring a lot from structured plays that find targets inside 50. I see the, most of their scores in this game coming from chaos ball entries into the forward 50. Yep. That's Chad Wingard's bread and butter. Does that every day. He's done it every game this season. So um, there's Malik's on that one. If you were to smack them together, it's about nine bucks. Beauty. Nice. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Saturday night at the Gabba. <laughs> what? He's got a haiku. Oh. Get, get, the, chime, oh. get oh. the chime ready. Get yeah. the chime ready. All right, okay. All right. All right, everyone breathe. Fremantle Dockers. Beat Melbourne. Beat Brisbane. Oh. My goodness. Free O. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know, uh, do you know, know, that, do you know what I call that one? I call that one is saying a lot, but really nothing at all. That's that's the name of that haiku. Your life story. The t- actual. But the title was more artistic than the poem. Yeah. The poem was more autistic no, than was. the title. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was better than, <laughs> better you, than the thank, final line. That, thank Chole you, of the round. <laughs> that could have been that. Thank you for that. Remarkable stuff. Uh, let us have a look at the Saturday night clash at the Gabba. And this is just a sneaky contender for game of the round, in my opinion. It is the Brisbane Lions who will be having a big old look at the freshened up St. Kilda Saints. Dan, talk to me here. Uh, we all called it last week. Brisbane have not been... Super impressive. Mm. Now, they actually weren't bad against Freeman. Well, I didn't think they, they had their worst game. But Agreed. Um, they've shown their hand against the top teams. I just, I'm just i a bit disappointed because I really thought they were a, a, like a proper, proper contender. And I, and Are I, you saying they're not now? There's doubt in my mind. It's, it's, it's now, Yeah, it's a two-horse race now. No. I don't think it's a two I mean, Brisbane is still around the mark, and obviously there's plenty of time left in this season. But Thank just a, like they just did not impress me. They weren't great, but they weren't. Terrible. They were just, you know, they just played some footy on the weekend. Yep. It's not good enough to win a flag. Nope. Absolutely not good enough to win a flag. They seem to be reverting back to, oh, just let Lockie Neal do it all. Mm. Just let Lockie do it. It's not going to win footy games. No. Dan Rich had a nice bounce back. Mm. Dane Zorko played through torn webbing on the fingers. I don't know if you saw that. It was, that it was horrible. It was pretty yeah. grouse. It was not good. That's tough. Uh, and uh, he was stinking it up prior as again, fantasy would tell you, he was, mm. he was terrible. He actually played much better in the second half with a busted hand. So just, just big go respect. And just feel that, and then just like to the listeners. Yeah. Just does this feel good? Because I don't like it. Imagine, <laughs> Imagine hearing that on the podcast. Like, <laughs> yeah. what is happening in the studio? Imagine like this. This hurts. Imagine if it was torn. Yeah. It's, 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 well. it's, it was not pleasant to look at, yeah, and I can't imagine it would like have felt very nice. Off. Well, the old, the old jackass um, segment from yeah, the first movie, paper cuts, where yeah. paper cuts in the webbing of the fingers and toes and such, you and they're see, all just dying. For those listening at home, Desmond's face just screwed up into a ball. It looks like it's some jammed bark up his ass. <laughs> I'd rather that. I'd rather get back. It, 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 like back I said, up. it was not good, but credit to him. Played through <laughs> it and played much better uh, with the hand strapped up. But they just, yeah, they're just not looking super impressive. They really need to go into the bye with a win. And I don't know that this is the team you want to be playing because the Saints have been playing some very reasonable football. They have indeed. What I find interesting, having a look at uh, how these two teams stack up against each other, Desmond, the Saints come in with a 10-win, 17-loss record at the Gabba. Having said that, the Saints won last year against, uh, against the Lions. And the Saints have also won five of their last seven bouts against the Lions. So this is not an ideal matchup. Four said lines. Um, and did you hear last week it was what the, the number one offense in Brisbane versus the number one defense in, um, in Frio? Yeah? 
Now, interestingly, Frio broke them off of the back of slingshot footy that was precise and accurate. Very skillful. Now, that that's that's the Saints. When they're what, up and going. What happened in the last quarter? What happened? How many? Mm-hmm. You saw they pounced on them, and they did exactly what I say every single week. Make a T-shirt on it, someone. <laughs> Five goals out of nowhere. Yeah, Six five. goals. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You go, oh, this is, I've seen this before. Mm-hmm. And I thought St. Kilda. And then I look. I looked at the, I did, because I do my tips the week early, so I don't forget. And then I can just change them. Sure. And I looked and I was like, oh no, danger, danger game. And that's why it's the Des Dog of the Week. St. Kilda going to get up this week at the Gabba. It's a very big call. Very, very big mm-hmm. call. I wonder what they're paying. Salacious. Three like bucks. It. it was three bucks on the dot. Three bucks is Salacious. not a bad nice. shout. Not a bad shout at all. And do you know what? I wouldn't even go one to 39 because do you know what? If Saints get rolling, they can beat any team. If and if, that's the problem because the mm. gap between their best and worst at the minute is... That's why um, $3 is worth a punt. I'm inclined to agree with you on that. Did you know... Um, so you're, what, you're tipping Saints? I'm tipping Saints. Well, look, Saints, I went back through their last four years. They are four and four for wins post buy. What of Brisbane then? I didn't change. That, I didn't offer, that, that offers me no help whatsoever. I didn't care at all. No, I'm going the Saints 1-39. to 39. Okay. I, I Genuinely, I, I they're just starting to play more better football than they're playing shite football. And as I said, that slingshot footy and that accuracy coming off of half back with, with Brad Hill deciding to realise his full Actually potential play. and Jack Sinclair coming from the clouds, that's, that's bread and butter footy for them. So I genuinely, if, if the Saints bring the heat... I've got the Lions. I'm I'm gonna stick with them for another week. Yep. Um, I just think that's you know that's that's a game that they needed to lose. We always say that. Interesting. It probably makes them realise. Hold on, we're not hot shit. No. Can't beat anybody. They got to come out. They got to get back into some form before the bye. Because once you take that week off, who knows what can happen on the other side of it. So they they've really got to go in with some good form. So I'm gonna take them. Uh, but. I do hope St. Kilda win because I like the way they play footy. I agree with you. I just hope it's a good game, just generally speaking, and I suspect it shall be. Uh, now, bets-wise. I know what you're going to say, so let me kick it off. Go on. Stink Pig McCarthy. No. Get out of here. I do, no, no, no see, he's Katie? second. He's second. Shut up, you uh, snitching I, I, bitch. I, I knew he would be in there. <laughs> dollar thirty. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. yeah no, uh, was it dollar thirty? Dollar twenty-two? I've got dollar thirty. Yeah, already. You've done, you've, say. You've I done can't snitch on that one. You've done well. Right. I'm going to punch you after this. Uh, <laughs> McCarthy anytime goal. Dan McStay anytime goal. That was paying like a dollar forty or something stupid like that. And I was like, well, why? <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, uh, Katie and Coleman for fifteen. And he loves it. If as a yeah, darts he player. Loves it. Bang, 15 on the knuckle. Mm-hmm. Love it. Uh, Zach Jones for 20 plus disposals. Done that every game he's played this year. And Crouch and Sinclair for 25 disposals apiece. And then I was also writing my notes and I gave Brad Hill a bit of a talk up. So I thought I'll chuck him in for 20 as yep. well. Have those seven leagues, about 750. Yep. Nice. I'd, I'd uh, roll Marshall for a goal, dollar sixty one. Okay. Because he does it in every game that, Ryder, that Ryder plays with him. It's good good value. And I, I did have Lockie Neal for 30 plus. Beautiful. Because that's a dollar fifty one at the moment. Oh, that's a lot, mate. I tell you, that's that that's pumped up a little bit, and I think he'll be able to do that against the Saints mids. They don't tag anybody. They they don't bother to do that. They back in their mids to to win. So I think Lockie will have his thirty. That's perfect. That's beautiful. Not dumb from you whatsoever. But what is dumb is this next segment, of course, gents dummy of the week. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Dummy of the week. Fellas, this is a gigantic dummy of the week this week. There's almost too much. I could almost make a pod Mm -hmm. out of the dummies that came out of the woodwork. I I, I thought it was incredible. I'm going to get into a a bit of a list at some stage. I'm going to open the floor up. I've only got one this week because I knew you had a big list coming, so I didn't want to... Oh, yeah. uh, I didn't want to go too nuts. Did you have David King in your notes? No, I didn't actually. Oh, he's had a week off you. Yeah, for, yeah, for me. Yeah. yeah, he was on my radar. It was only a little one. Um, I'm assuming you just have nothing. I got nothing. I thought so. Um, Best. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they were. It was after the Friday night game. They were discussing the dogs' fortunes, letting in too many points, which they are. Mm. Their defense is playing horrible football at the moment. Mm. Uh, David King's suggestion: just chuck Aaron Norton down back. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Norton, the only man in the forward line who can mm. kick goals. That's fair. So we're wanting to finish up games 28-30. Nice. Sounds good. Come on, David. The man's in the running for a Coleman. That, w- that is enough to get Luke Beveridge fired. Now, I had a look through the stats. Okay? That's amazing. On face value, uh, you would think that it would change the dog's fortunes if you took away Aaron Norton's 30 goals. Oh, th- th- it actually doesn't. 
doesn't change any of their results at all. So there you go. But because no one's helping him. Well, but if you do take away his goals, yeah. who is chipping in to help get them these uh, these percentage boosts that they've got? Riley West. No. He's not. They, m- most of their games that they've won have been by 30, 40 points, mm. right? Now, as I said, it's not going to change the results, but percentage is it's massive. Huge. I don't think moving Aaron Norton to defence is the answer to their woes. Uh, I'm inclined to agree with you. <laughs> I, t- I tend to dunk on King at will, yeah. so I'll, I'll, I'll rein myself back in because I've got other targets yeah. of hate. But I, that's a good pick from you. Any others? Nah, I don't. Just the one. Like I said, I knew you were frothing. Uh, for oh, this one, so let's go. I've got some big ones. Uh, first off, um, Lisa Wilkinson, uh, the the moral barometer of our times. If you're ever unsure about what's a good decision and not in your life and the world in general, you talk to Lisa because she's got it down pat. Boy, oh boy. Got to love her. Uh, her I, sig- I don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, Siri, what is sarcasm? No, no, I just, no, I just no, thought no, I'd no. put it. I can't even be sarcastic. Karen's like her. Uh, and she that's a, a ripping word. Uh, you'll love this one. Her suggestion for solving the Russia-Ukraine crisis, mm. right? Oh, wow. We're not even delving into AFL here. I like this. No, I'm yeah, just well, putting it's, the head down. It's, no. sport, it's sport related. Yeah, prepare your head early. Uh, her, her suggestion on, on live television. Bring back TV, state of origin. You're not far off it. Oh, she no. said that Russia and Ukraine should play a soccer match to decide. <laughs> to decide, <laughs> to decide, the, war. Who, what, to decide, to decide the, war. the war. Yeah, to decide the not war. Not to make peace, no. but to decide the war. Yeah, she said that they, they, they could solve their differences over a soccer game. That was her. Hey, suggestion. what about her? That, that actually what? might be the worst thing hey, I've what? ever heard. <laughs> I got solve a humanitarian for her. crisis through a game of football. I'll flip you for Mario Paul. Hey, what? Uh, I got. A, I have a suggestion. Then why doesn't she and Karl Stefanovic have a wrestling match to decide their wage battle? <laughs> <laughs> How's that for you? Oh my let's, god! I've watched let's that. Let's get some sporting to decide some serious issues. You idiot! You what an idiot! Nah, she'd never bite on that. Too sexist. Sure. Yeah. Sure. She'd never bite. But what on isn't that. these days? That, um, I mean, that is absolutely outrageous. That's a good one, isn't it? It's dumb as. I thought I'd kick that one off with an absolute, uh, an absolute I, blast. I, I, I fear <laughs> that you're only going to go backwards from here because yeah, that, no, that, that, that might be the worst thing I've ever heard. I never, I never thought I could hate a person. More. <laughs> it's her and Amy Schumer, my two least favorite people in the world. Oh, it's cheap. Poor old Amy. Uh, look, a quick oh, one. Poor Amy. I'm uh, going to remember that you said that. What poor old, poor old Amy? Amy yeah. I'm, gonna I'm never letting you forget it. Recording that. Uh, okay. Hey Siri, what is sarcasm? No, still, nah. still, no you said it now. Too bad. You said it with love in your eyes. It's love <laughs> in my eyes. Anyway, let's keep let's keep rumbling here. Now, Stephen May uh, telling Melksham, we all know about this tale. Telling Melksham to his face in a in a restaurant. Hey, Melksham, if you played in the granny, we would have lost. They won by like seventy points. Yeah. I strongly doubt yeah, that well, Jake Melksham playing would have been an eighty point swing. Well, and off air, Des said to me. Oh, well, Stephen May would win in a fight because, you know, if, if they were both prepared, uh, Stephen May would kick Jake Malcolm's from his ass. And I thought, if you say something like that to a man, mm. you should be prepared for what's coming your way. Copper knuckle, yeah. Uh, and I'm not surprised he's, Jake Malcolm gave him one. He's, he's drunk. Stephen May's on the beers. How you going? Concussed. Yeah. So Dumbass. his brain is yeah. already scrambled <laughs> and scrambled. <laughs> and he's scrambling it more. It's like a Des scramble, but in your head. But what an absolute comment to make. What poor old... Poor, oh, look, Melky's not going to set the world on fire, but he's not an 80-point swing player, <laughs> for God's <laughs> sake, Stephen. No, that's no. funny. As well. it's, that's funny. I think the comment's funny. Oh, the comment's great. Look, uh, i got more stupidity. Let's keep rumbling. Um, in, in an interview on SEN Breakfast, Cody Waitman admitted that he's got the ability to win free kicks, but he believes it's part of his on-field repertoire and he's not breaking any rules. Quote, I think I do have an ability to draw free kicks. I think that's a skill set rather than a flop or whatever you want to call that. I saw this. Uh, real stupid. Now, I've got a stat for you, Des. Mm-hmm. Um, before he made those comments, Waitman got 36 frees out of 24 games played. Since that time, Dan, he's received two frees in five matches. Mm-hmm. Well done. And he's on everyone's radar now. Yeah. That same as Jack Ginneman. They're on everyone's radar. What an absolute dumbass. Like, and and it, it is a skill, drawing a free. Took Scott, Scott, yeah, but a free Joel Selwood. Free kick. That's, what, that's what's wrong with the AFL. Like, NBA players do that with the foul, and you have to give them the foul because mm. it's a foul. But Whereas the, these the, umpires... The, are, the, the, the NBA has tried to curtail that, though. They mm, have put in yeah. rules in place to stop to stop that happening. But it's the game. The, the AFL, as yet, has not. They've tried, and, and, then, and then the umpires forget about it three weeks later. It is a skill set, though. Let's be real. I mean, Joel Selwood has carved a career out of playing mm-hmm. for freaks, and mm-hmm. it's worked for but him. But he's never said it. But then, to, exactly. He's never but then said to it. talk about, hey, everyone, if you just like duck your head when you go into a contest, you get a free A. It's mm-hmm. hell funny, eh? Mm-hmm. Wayman's a. Oh, Lord. And Jack Ginvan said something very similar. Someone asked him about that this week, and he said, yeah, I've always played for free kicks. I've done it since I was a, since I was a junior. Well, enjoy getting none from now on, Jack. 
What a numpty. Um, uh, Christian Petraka copped a mini one from me. Uh, got quizzed on radio. Christian, how come you got no pl- uh, no fans rocking up to your games? I, saw, I did see this. What's going on with this? And he said, oh, look, um, it's Saturday Arvo, Saturday night. We played 4.30 p.m. against Frio. Not a great time for a Saturday night game. It's just too cold at the moment. I don't think people want to come. I find our age demographic for our fans is still quite older. He's done the market research. He's mm-hmm. got out. He's got out the clipboard, the glasses. He's gone around surveying. Beakers, Spunks and Burner. Yeah, yeah Lab Cato. Yeah. Excuse me, how old are you? 55 to 69. Tick, thank you very much for your time. You know um, you know, Fox Footy minced his words up right <coughs> and said, um, and Fox Footy, Excuse they're going to be my dummy. With this, they minced his quote. He said, well, when we've had big fans, like a big fan showing, we played really well. And then we haven't had so many fans and, we, and, and we've lost. Like it was kind of like that summed up. He said it much more professionally than that. Mm. And Fox Footy put, Melbourne fans not showing up. Christian Petrarca says, we play bad because of no fans. It was something like that. <laughs> And that is the media in a nutshell. It was so it? dumb. Like, the target didn't say that Fox footy idiots. All, all this is, though, is just skirting around the issue that the reason people don't turn up is because mm. of, mainly because of the shit umpiring. Uh, yeah. yeah. You, you, you go through any comment section on any social media app that you want to go Continuous. through after every single game, it's always the same comments. Umpiring is shit. Mm-hmm. Players playing for free kicks. Yep. Can't stand watching it. We're just going to sit at home and watch it instead. Or, or go to local footy. Or just not watch it at all. Yeah, and, correct. And I've heard that my, like, I've heard that my entire upbringing. People have gone that. Uh, even cr- like, especially with Crow supporters, it is going, far worse now than it ever has been. And, that, and, yes. that, and now there's yeah, people people are not just people in the circle. Like people are genuinely going. Right, what else go. have we got? Big shots. Let's, let's finish these. Uh, <clears throat> oh, these are all big though. Nah, <laughs> we've, got a, we've got a motor. AFL House. They've told the umpires that they uh, they want to soften the rules around dissent, mm-hmm. uh, but they're not going to tell the players, the clubs, or the fans that that uh, that changing to that ruling is going to change. Yep. They're not going to tell them. Yep. So if you're listening or watching, you're not going to know that the ruling around dissent has changed. There's no way you could know. No one's going to know a thing. No. It's locked down tight. The AFL is not letting this information get out. What information? I don't know. What was just said here? If anyone else on the planet was as bad at their job as Brad Scott, they wouldn't have one. They just would not have a job. He is the worst man at his job on the face of the earth. He's the Robert Mugabe of the AFL and I'm over it. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I'm going to get cancelled for that in about 10 years. Nah, you're wait. right. <laughs> can't wait. You're right. Oh, Free over Tony. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and then wood. <laughs> of, of all of those, no, I, think, I, think, look, look, geez, I think, look, Lisa Wilkinson's just about got to take the chocolates, but I've got to give it to Nick Rewalt for the triple threat. Sam Butler's drug problem is everyone else's problem, according to uh, Nick Rewalt. He, uh, he reckons more should be done by the Players Association, which strongly agree, uh, Nick. Yeah, good. That a grown man with hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, earned over a career of uh, professional sport, mm-hmm. contacts up and down the country, um, opportunities galore. Endless contacts. Yeah, well, I, mean, I mean, I do. It's his I, fault. I, I do. I do distinct. So it's our fault. I do distinctly yeah. remember that uh, uh, Gillan McLaughlin was holding him down and injecting heroin into his. Veins. He did that. Like, yeah. I, I do distinctly remember that story coming out. Come on, Nick. Come on. I feel terrible for Sam Butler. It, 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 like, great. Drug addiction is nothing to, you know, it's make, a scourge, ma- man. make light of. It's, it's, it's terrible, but like, come on. At some point, <laughs> people have to take responsibility for your own actions. And no one wants to do that in this day and age. Right Everyone there. else's fault. Right there. Uh, Nicky, uh, um, uh, number two out of his triple threat. Saints, what, top four? Uh, close. <clears throat> close to top four, having a great season at the minute. Nah, nah. They should still be calling Clarko and sounding him out. Sound him out. See what he can do. Yeah, maybe he wants to come out. Hey, Brett Ratton. <sighs> Cop one of these, mate. See ya. Yeah, your team's playing great. I, yeah. don't, I personally don't like Brett Ratton, but your team's playing awesome. Yeah. Top four, guess mate, what? Mate, we gave out. Brett Ratton hell last yes. season. And rightly so. This season. I'm on him. He's fine. I'm still, They're I'm playing still good a footy. huge fan, but he's doing well. Like, I'm, I can't. I love the Saints. You've got to buy Ratton stocks at this point. You can't turn. Come on, 100%. Nick. Back the man in. You're St. Kilda through and through. Act like it. And the other one, the big one, uh, the last one, uh, is uh, Nick Rewalt reckons that the AFL should be apologising to Trent Cotchin because uh, a comment was made that he should be going to the Logies with that performance. And that's just not fair. (laughs) Leave Cotchin alone. (laughs) Apologise, someone. It's sad. It's so sad. I mean, you make all, a all, this, all this week in the AFL is reminding me of is that episode of The Inbetweeners where all they're doing is, oh, sorry, oh, sorry, <laughs> yeah. oh, sorry, oh, sorry, I'm such a big bender, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's an elite. No. It's an elite. No. Yeah. Enough sorries. Get on with the footy. I strongly agree. Strongly agree. And we shall indeed take those words to heart and we're going to get on with the footy. We've got uh, well, two one, games well, left. One of these teams is. 
well, even then, uh, half of this team is. Uh, yeah, sure, Sunday afternoon at Marvel Stadium, because someone's got to play at this time slot, so why not the North Melbourne Kangaroos and the GWS Giants at Marvel Stadium? I think, I think we literally bashed through this one in about two minutes. It's very easy. You, said, you a- said it's about time slot. I mean, North got Friday night footy up and running, didn't they? What, back in the day? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah it, it, it was their idea. What, 20 years King? ago? Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was their idea. Was really and now they've pigeonholed Sunday afternoon footy that no one watches. The graveyard. The graveyard shift. Perfect. Well, that pretty much sums up the game, I think. <laughs> Let's move on. No, I'm kidding. Giants are going to get up here. I'm I would. Um, I, I think I would have a not a differing opinion because I'd still tip the Giants, but I would, uh, I would be inclined to maybe say there's a potential upset if Leon Cameron was still around. Potentially, potentially. But, but he's dead. He is, he's no more. He is. Uh, he's he's with with my man, mm. with my man right here in my heart. So Giants and, and look, Giants. Giant, the, Giants have two good want? games together before. Before they did the, before the buy. They actually played two good if games. Giants play well. They could bruise up the uh, ruse here, but Giants going to win. Simple as that. And another week of betting down the Matthew Knight system and just chilling out, you know, with the boys, mm-hmm. getting you know just just a bit of a love in. I think Got it's going to do them well. Mm-hmm. No stick. There is there oh, is. No. Oh, that's oh. disgusting. The, 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 that's the, that cold. The, the, the ruse again. Same same old story. More dramas. Jason Horn Francis getting in a bit of strife for liking that Instagram post that was about, funny, about, about North trading him. That's quite funny. I actually oh, enjoy that. That's funny. banter. As I said to you two weeks ago, he basically runs a show now. Yeah, he runs a club. You just have to let him do whatever he wants at this point. LeBron Horn Francis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at twelve years old. <laughs> um, they played shit footy against the Suns. Suns had the equal most inside fifties ever in a game. And North's strong suit is supposed to be their midfield, and their midfield is just getting absolutely clouted. And that's with Jed Anderson. By, right? Matt, by like Matt Rao. Matt Rao, who couldn't get five disposals two weeks ago. Unbelievable. They are... <laughs> Yeah, they are just absolutely abominably bad. It's it's not even stopping at AFL level. The VFL coach of the Roos, Des, Lee Adams, he reckons that the youngsters, he gave an absolute bake when they got pounded on the weekend in the VFL, and he said that there's too many youngsters in this team that are just padding the stat sheet. That's a VFL level. And they all, and probably all the players are crying because he was too hard on them. Probably. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, oh, sorry. Sidley. Sorry. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm so hard. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Dumb. The AFL's genuinely worried this could be the lowest attended game of the year. It will be. Probably. Why are they worried about that? Probably. Just let it happen. If nah, you, like, go, if, to, go. If you're listening in Victoria, rock up. Go on. But the problem is, you go to Marvel and the beer's like $15. Well, like, yeah. why would you want to go? And the umpiring's pustulized. Yeah, no, and all you get, you go to a pub across the road, you got seven buck buddy Imperial Pints of Super Dry. The only reason I'm interested in this game is because I'm going to be trading in Giants players into my fantasy team and just watching stonks rise. And making money off bets. Yes, let's go. Yes, I'm tipping. Giants, Gi- Giants? Giants 40 Giants, plus. I've got, I've got 40 plus. Yeah, how Giants much they 40 want? plus. How Excellent. Much? I love it. Okay. Uh, uh, Bet me up, baby. All right, Toby Green for three plus goals. Three. I had him for two. Yeah. Three is dollar sixty six for three. I like Ooh. that value. He'll do that. Josh Kelly for thirty plus dollar sixty three. Cogs for twenty five plus dollar sixty one. Mm-hmm. And H Perryman for twenty plus disposal dollar twenty nine. Looking over my shoulder, yes. were we? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just glasses. Uh, work. Uh, look at the moment. This is basically just run of the mill. It is. It's very run of the mill. Mine's <laughs> not dissimilar. Perryman twenty plus. Uh, Luke McDonald, twenty plus in the north back line. He's just, he just cops are hammering every week. He does. He gets he gets the ring pounded, but it's good for stats. Uh, Jed Anderson, twenty plus. <laughs> First game back, twenty eight. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Mum. Um, what else we got here? Jason Orn Francis, fifteen. I think that's pretty pretty uh, academic at this point. Uh, Lockie Ash for fifteen is uh, just a little tasty one that sort of caught my eye. I thought we we're gonna have a nibble on that one. Cool, indeed. And uh, what else do I have? Toby Green, Jesse Hogan, both to kick. Two a piece, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm missing one. Where am I missing? What am I missing? I'm missing one. I'm missing one. It doesn't really matter. But um, I had all those, put them together. It was paying like an $18 multi. Nice. Just for stock standard stuff. Nice. And I'm happy with that. Last game of the round, gents, fans, connoisseurs. Uh, it is the Collingwood Magpies. The Melbourne Demons. The Queen. It's Big Freeze, baby. At last. All three of them are together again. Mm -hmm. It's Big Freeze time. Mm -hmm. Time for the Big Freeze. This was uh, uh, Bucks' one-year anniversary from not being an AFL coach. (laughs) What a stat to pull out. And uh, it's funny. I'm sure he'll be having a big glass of Geeson tonight to celebrate. Who (laughs) who won that last year? Collingwood won. Yes, they did. Collingwood went and won last year. Very, very interesting, especially with the uh, drama show going on a little bit with the Ds. I expect the Ds to fire back here, though. I I didn't get to see the last little bit of that Sydney game. So I may not be able to have the uh, most statistical analysis, but well, when do it, I ever? It, it wouldn't be the first time. But when, when, when do I ever? <laughs> I always do. No, nah. <laughs> nah, D's here. They're gonna like D. People are gonna sleep on the D's now, and I like. 
Oh, well, do they have reason oh. to do so? I mean, Melbourne kicked one goal, to uh, sorry, yeah, one goal versus four goals in their last quarter against the uh, against the Swans. Mm-hmm. Now that sort of fade out mm-hmm. has become uncharacteristic of Melbourne. Now I'm I'm hoping, in all seriousness, I'm hoping that's not a trend because mm-hmm. that's a if that starts to develop and sneak in, that's a real worry. Uh, and I th- yeah, May out is, is massive. May I don't know. Be. Are Melbourne gettable all of a sudden? I think I, if, no. the, if the Magpies were ever going to do it, it's yeah. I mean, Mag- the Maggies aren't in terrible form at the moment. No, they yeah, rolled they're, Carlton. They're, they're, they're in a bit of form. They're, they're, bit they're of coming a... in in reasonable nick. If they were ever going to do it, now would be the right time. The, the, the Demons, again, we haven't seen this turmoil at, at the club for, for years. Now there was a texting scandal that came out during the week as well. Mm. Um, you know, the, the, the higher-ups calling the players soft and, and, mm. and the coaching up to night and up. This is back in 2020. Yeah. Mm. But you know, this is not stuff you need. You, no. don't, you don't need to be dredging shit up from, yeah, from but two you know years what? ago. I think if you're Melbourne, get it out now. Get all the drama out now and then come in strong for September. They've got to buy next week. Mm-hmm. Try and get a win on the trot. If you don't, it doesn't really matter. You've got to make Go to the pub, get on the pokes, mm-hmm. have a few beers, have a few knuckles in the car park. You know, just that good old, good old fashioned No, but that, that situation there, you look at the, on the inside of the club. May's had a bit of a dust up with Melksham. They're probably, mm. they, they might not be best mates now, but they've... they've they probably forced them to put in the room and said, Correct. boys, sort this out or you're not leaving. And the door's locked until they hug. I like that. Simple as that. Uh, no, that, uh, that, that would be, be something that he would do, I reckon. It's I reckon, a, yeah. It's as simple as that. And that's what you've got to do. Diving into the old Malcolm Blight I think, uh, I think Goody is the perfect coach for, like, especially like me, media are dumb. But if you actually have real turmoil, I feel like Goody would be good at solving little petty teenage issues that you've got. He's a laid back operator. They come up. In all, in, and probably dealt with plenty of stuff oh, and back in the Crows days as well. More than plenty. No, in order, just I'm going to sum this one up. The Pies' first half last week, far too error-ridden for mine. Didn't like what I saw. Again, a young team doing young team things, or rather a rebuilding team doing rebuilding team things. Yep. Kept them in it against the Hawks, though, because the Hawks were equally as bad. You can't you can't dish that up. You can't dish that first half up against the Ds. You can't dish that a, a quarter like that up against the mm-hmm. Ds. They will make mincemeat of it. They need to bounce back here, the demons, mm-hmm. and they're just—they're still too good across all lines in order to to lose this one. Even though it's a big a big occasion, and blokes like at Collingwood are going to rise to the occasion, uh, and I'm expecting it to be a really good game. But I am not expecting a Melbourne loss. It's no. Melbourne one to thirty nine for mine. As, as I uh, had the same, I got the same same bet. Mm-hmm. Darcy Cameron versus Max Gorn in the middle. Yeah, it's oh, actually going to be good. Oh, oh, oh. Darcy Cameron's been amazing. He's been unbelievable. And what, did I say? About three months back, about um, talking about potentially trading Brody Grundy at this mm. point. Yeah? That, that's been stirred up in the media this week. Both both Adelaide teams should be looking at it. Poor, uh, poor absolutely should ho- be looking hopefully at it. Not, you, hopefully not Adelaide, secretly. Where'd you hear it first? I don't want Grundy. Where'd what, you hear You want Kieran Strawn? <coughs> Rob Gowan. <coughs> Where's Rob Gowan? <laughs> not hearing nothing about Kieran Strawn. L- losing his spot to Kieran Strawn, mate. Yeah, and, and then he comes back and... Who does the camera? Yeah. <laughs> Crow, Crow's rucks it. Crow's ruck stocks are good. Yeah, they're fine. Strawn and Rob are both both fine. Port, Port them. should absolutely just have to take a look at Grundy Kieran. though. I love you. Strongly yeah, agree. Sure. Now, bets wise, I've got a bit on the go for this one, and it's all pretty much academic stock standard stuff. But I don't care if it makes money; it makes money. Mm-hmm. That's what I do care about. Ollie Henry, Cosy Pickett, a goal apiece. Yep. All right, lock that in. Thanks, Mum. Uh, Nick Dacos, twenty disposals was paying yep. like a dollar fifty or something when That's I saw it. Thirty six on the weekend. Yeah, and just, I don't know what they're doing at that bloody betting company's HQ, but I'm about it. Nick Dacos for 20, thank you. Crisp and Viney for 25 disposals apiece. Clayton Oliver, 30. These are all pretty standard. Then I just thought I'd have a little bit of a risk with James Jordan, 20 disposals. Mm -hmm. And if you put all those together, it's paying about 10 bucks. Nice. I had uh, the guinea pig for two goals. Oh. The AFL did actually say that they missed a couple of his free kicks on the weekend, which I don't agree with. I thought they were... I thought the umpires were actually great. That was probably the only thing they officiated well during that game. But they'll probably give him a couple of easy ones this week to just say, oh, sorry. Um, $2.08 for two goals. Track goal, $1.34. Hasn't done it in two weeks straight. Yeah, it worries me now. He will get back on the score sheet this week. You reckon? Week. Yeah, I do. Uh, and a goey for 20-plus disposals, $1.50. That's perfect. That's bloody beautiful. Bloody beautiful. Excellent. Gents? As always, it's just a pleasure to share this room with you. It, re- it really is. It is, always. It really is. Oh, a pack of Nostradamuses. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly the wisest men in football, one, two, and three. I mean, and thank you to you as well for supporting us. We love having you. We love doing this every week. If you could just repay us 
by just hitting the subscribe button, please. That would be love. You're not getting notifications. We just want to build up the content. We want to build up the page. We're three off of getting 150 subs, which would just be would be nice because we put, we've dumped no money into this. We're just three clowns in a room. But please, like and subscribe. Thanks very much. If you uh, don't like and subscribe, you hate uh, Fight M&D and everything it stands for. So <laughs> like and subscribe, baby. And buy a beanie too. Buy a beanie, get around it and subscribe. It costs you 25 bucks and a click of the finger. Bang! And twenty five dollars does not go to us. We get, we get. No, we, we do not get that. It just goes to uh, a good cause. We are impoverished. Thank you very much. See you next week.